Hello and welcome to Mrs. Long's video lesson on the picture of Dorian Gray. Today we're looking at chapter 15. So chapter 15 picks up on the evening after Basil's murder and Dorian Gray has um, obviously he spent his uh, his time in that day uh, manipulating Alan Campbell into the disposing of Basil's body and so the previous evening or the, the 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 evening directly after the murder um dorian seems to be able to go to sleep quite easily he has a good night's sleep and so it, it can kind of make us think that he is not experiencing as much trauma as one would after the you know somebody's murder that you have committed but we, we saw in the previous chapter um in his dealings with with Alan and as he was waiting and the tension he was feeling and the desperation that he experienced that he's definitely um, not completely unaware of the consequences of what he's done and so now even though the physical evidence is more or less taken care of we can see his growing paranoia and anxiety being manifested in this chapter as he spends a night at um, Lady Narborough's party so he arrives at the party and we the description on this in this extract shows us um, this idea this continuing idea of appearance versus reality so dorian gray inside his forehead is throbbing with maddened nerves he feels excited but his manner as he bent over his hostess's hand was as easy and graceful as ever and no one looking at him might have believed what tragedy um had um, had occurred in his in his life um, in the in the past few hours. So he himself cannot even one, help wondering at the calm of his demeanor, um, and he for a moment almost takes a pleasure in this um, double life. You know, being able to pull the wool over everyone's eyes, but it's only momentary because the overwhelming uh, emotion that Dorian experiences in this chapter is. A sense of unease and, and growing paranoia. So he takes some consolation in Harry's arrival, at least his friend is there, but he is distracted at dinner and he cannot eat everything, anything. He drinks eagerly, um, obviously the, the alcohol is going to help him to relax a little bit, but he's so out of sorts that Henry notices it and says, what is the matter with you tonight, Dorian? Now Dorian just says, um, no, nothing, I'm fine. And so for the rest of the dinner, then they go on to their usual topics of conversation. Uh, um, Lady Narborough um, says to Henry, oh, you very, everybody I know says you're very wicked. And he sort of comments and he says, it's monstrous that people say things that are true. And Dorian says, oh, isn't he incorrigible? So this is the usual mode of, of banter. Lord Henry for for the most part sort of talking up a big game but not actually being as bad as everyone says he is and um then they start talking about women and marriage and lady narborough says to lord henry don't you think we should find um, a wife don't you think mr gray should get married and um henry says oh I always, i'm always telling dorian that and um Again, they start talking about marriage, which is one of a topic that Lord Henry seems to have a lot to say about. And he says, what nonsense people talk about happy marriages. A man can be happy with any woman as long as he does not love her. Now, we know of the, um, the situation between Lord Henry and his wife, the fact that they don't really seem to have much uh, love or much of a close relationship. So maybe that's why he is happily married, because he can sort of go around and do whatever he wants and not worried about the fact that he's got a wife. Um, so this continues as usual for a while. When Dorian and Lord Henry have a moment to themselves, Lord Henry pushes the matter and he says, are you better? You seem rather out of sorts. I'm quite well, says um, Dorian. I'm just tired. And so he's trying to explain away his behavior. And Lord Henry talks about the previous night and about a duchess who is devoted to you she tells me she's going down to Selby and so we can see that there's definitely another woman on the horizon for Dorian probably another one who's going to be left disappointed possibly ruined if the rumors are to be believed 
Now, um, Lord Henry makes this very um, superficial comment. He's not, he doesn't mean anything by it. He says, Dorian, you ran off very early last night. What did you do afterwards? Did you go straight home? Now, he doesn't mean anything by it, but of course, this is going to kick Dorian's um, uh, paranoia into gear. And what he does here is what often people do when they're hiding something. If you are lying, you sometimes over explain your lie to make yourself seem more innocent. But in doing so, you appear even more suspicious. So he says, no, I didn't get home till nearly three. Um, and then uh, he says, yes, I went to the club. No, no, I didn't go to the club. I walked about. I forgot what I did. Why are you so inquisitive, Harry? And then he says, if you want to know, I came in at half past two. Um, I left my latchkey at home and then my servant had to let me. And if you want any corroborative evidence on the subject, you can ask him. Now he's behaving as if he's on the stand on trial. Uh, Lord Henry is just having a conversation with him. So, of course, Henry says, no, man, I, I don't need um, you, you know, to check up on you. I was just asking. But Dorian is now, he cannot help um, kind of rising to this in a, in a more agitated manner because of his growing sense of unease and this um, nagging anxiety. Uh, Lord Henry says, as if I cared, something has happened to you, Dorian. Tell me what it is. You're not yourself tonight. Um, and of course, it makes us think of what uh, Henry said to Dorian um, earlier on the novel where he says, you shall always tell me everything you do. And of course, at this moment, Dorian doesn't. And he says, no, I'm just irritable. Um, I'll see you. I'll come around and see you tomorrow. And then he makes his excuses and he leaves. And as he is going home, he muses on the fact that he, the, the casual questioning um, completely threw him. And he wanted to regain his nerves. Things that were dangerous had to be destroyed. Um, even though the idea of touching Basil's belongings uh, gives him um, the creeps, he opens up the the press in the wall where he had stowed Basil's coat and bag, and then he throws them into the fire and puts another um, log on it. And the smell of singeing clothes and burning leather was horrible. Well, it's horrible, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't as horrific as what poor old Alan had to go through in the previous chapter. It took him three quarters of an hour to consume everything. So he burned up all evidence of, of Basil being there. And I remember Basil had sent his, his bigger belongings off to Paris uh, before he left. And so there's no evidence now that Basil did not get on the train because there's no trace of him left in England. Now, Dorian previously says that you need to, he needed, he wanted some sort of mode of forgetting. And so the, in this, the end of this chapter, he has this mad craving. He lit a cigarette, threw it away. It wasn't enough. And so he goes over to a cabinet and he takes out a small um, oriental box. He opens it and inside is opium paste. Um, and he smells it, but he doesn't, he doesn't um, stay at home and use that. What he does is he then goes and he, he dresses up um, in his common clothes. Remember the the press where he stored Basil's coat and bag was also where he kept his many disguises. So he dresses up so that he's not recognizable and he leaves his house and he finds a, um, a coach. And even though the driver doesn't want to take him because it's so far, he pays him extra. And so this, this chapter ends on a little bit of a cliffhanger because now we're wondering where on earth is Dorian going and what is he going to get up to? You'll notice now that the length of the chapters get shorter and shorter as we come to our conclusion. We've had the climax of the story with um, Basil's murder, and now we've got this, this falling action to see how everything is going to resolve, and the pace picks up somewhat.